Future of Life dropped a like a petition saying why uh, AI is dangerous and to at least halt AI progression for at least six months. Like what is this organization called? Uh, Future of Life. Let me send you the article. Okay. And you, can, you, you can quickly uh, divulge into it. But some like notable signatures on this is um, I think Elon signed it. Like Waz from Apple signed it. So like notable like hitters was like, hey, what I love about this article though, they never said, hey, we have to stop. We just have to reel it back in and start creating the infrastructure to make it safe so it doesn't get to that point. So it was very interesting. The way they did it was very clickbait, you know, danger to humanity type of thing. But the way they broke it down was how can AI be dangerous? What are the myths? What are the realities of things? And these are the conversations that we need to consider now and create the safeguards for it versus, hey, we have to stop. It's bad. Let's not continue. So I love how they're doing a proactive approach on trying to make it safe and not get a, and not be too ambitious. So that's actually really interesting. I'm looking at the actual open letter that was published as well. It has 31,000 signatures as of June 3rd. You can always add your signature if you um, support it. It's actually really short as well. Mm -hmm. It's a reading, so you might take a while. It's not like listening to everything on 2x speed. So What I'm doing right now is I'm looking at it real quick. I'm comparing the document you sent me to the open letter mm -hmm. yeah so the one that you sent was a publication mm -hmm. generally talking about ai what it is what are some of the risks things like that the open letter that mm -hmm. i think you're actually talking about that was signed by people like elon and, and things like that that one is petitioning that and there all is. ai labs to immediately pause for six months for any training model greater than GBT4. My initial take is I don't like why is GBT4 that barometer of who needs to pause or not pause? That basically says that like open AI is the benchmark for what can be allowed or not allowed for, for labs. Mm -hmm. That also kind of gives open you AI. That the... That's like saying that open AI is like the benchmark for the industry. Like, yeah, because right now that's probably the highest that they actually want in the public eye or anything else in the back end. Like, they actually just have that superior product. I don't know. From a really capitalistic standpoint, I don't think that's right. It's like saying Coca Cola is the standard for all pop cola. No one else can push the limits of pop. So, I actually thought of it as more like social media thinking back on it. We never thought how social, even the social dilemma type of thing would mm -hmm. affect society. I kind of like it, only not in the capitalistic kind of sense, like business-wise, yeah, it's going to impede on business, but more society thought process would be like, yo, this is this can be a very powerful tool, but we have to safeguard it a little bit till we actually full get a full grasp versus saying, hell, we're just going to put it out to the world and see the ramifications after the fact. Thoughts? I think with any new technology that comes out, those who adapt the fastest... Mm -hmm. benefit those who try to resist it they don't benefit I, I don't really see it as that approach i think that it's not saying hey we have to stop it we just have to create the policies on it like you were in what was it you're in your social media tech life at that certain point and you had to figure out things from ground up so it's mm -hmm. pretty much just saying we're going to create the playbook for across the board versus each type of company is going to figure this out as they go wouldn't you use a guideline like a nice little let's just say um what do where's the role against trust and safety across like versus just saying, oh, I have to learn this as I go, which you did. I think that's how I interpreted this right now. I think the hardest versus part is saying, trying to create oversight or guidelines around something that no one really knows what, like what, what how do you make rules for something you don't necessarily fully understand yet? Yeah. It's like what Bitcoin and everything else and new type of technology, but I think it's a proactive approach versus just kind of letting it out and just hoping for the best. I feel like this is going to put it on a slope where AI models have to go through like an FDA like process. That'd be bad though. Mm. If they start to do artificial intelligence and everything else, quote unquote, like the myth of like robots attacking 
yes, Grant, maybe not. But wouldn't you just want to safeguard it? Like, was it iRobot? <laughs> the three laws? I think things like that is what drives a lot of the concern is a lot of the sci-fi mm-hmm. vid- like movies and how things can go wrong. There's also not a lot of like sci-fi movies that talks about what could go right. It's probably just not as interesting. But what was it? We're planning for the worst, hope for the best type of approach. Yeah. So like, okay, if you're thinking of like the FDA and you're developing a vaccine, things are stalled out for such long periods of time because it directly affects like individuals' health, except for the wellness industry, right? They're not supplements and all that stuff. They're not there's no oversight from the FDA in in that realm. An AI model, what is being regulated? Is it how it learns, how it's deployed? Because a lot of these, I mean, with with any technology, you can use it for good, you can use it for bad. Like, Mm -hmm. that's across the board. That exists everywhere. And so... You think they're concerned more instead of, like, people using it for good or bad, but the technology itself? I think it might stifle creativity and the progression of what you can do with the technology. And what it's going to end up doing is this huge opportunity is only going to be available to those that are like in a small percentile of the population. Mm. Like, okay, how about this? Let's say I had gone to school. I have my doctorates. I spent all this time and energy becoming an expert in my field for medicine. And I ha- I'm so, so like convicted that, or I have this like strong conviction that I can create the next generation medicine of some sort. The only way that I can even start that process is I have to know somebody that has access to someone that has a lot of venture capital to then fund all of that and then start going through all the politics that's associated with FDA to then getting it approved. Let's start with the first piece of that. You need to know somebody who has money to kick that process off. If you're not in that specific network, that access to like that brilliance is already being like cut off. And so if there's regulation around this, where they're saying people like open AI is one of the key players, like this is basically like who, who has the resources specifically the ability, like FDA processes take years, which means like you might have this billion dollar idea of a vaccine, but if you can't even float yourself financially for the years it takes to go through that process, you can never develop that technology, right? Or that that medicine. And that might happen here on open A, like the, the AI side, if you're trying to like push forward something, but now you're like, how do I float myself for whatever time? Because like if this is if this is if this is a government or a nonprofit, we know that the processes are gonna be slow as hell. Mm-hmm. Because they, they don't move quick. Right. And if you want to put this in a for profit, there's going to be tons of conflicts, right? Like the conflict of interest that's going to exist with like for profits managing this, even though they're going to be more efficient, it's going to create this like mistrust in society of like who they're actually like approving or not approving. Like the haves and have nots type of approach. Like it, exactly. Approaches. And so, like, what, like, what's the result of this going to look like? Okay. Microsoft, Facebook, open AI. And any other high, like really well-funded organization, they're going to be able to push forward things. And everyone else, you're like, hey, I know how to build this. And I know that I can do this. But if I put any of this forward, then like that could be, I don't know, if this leads to like some kind of law or like violation of law, yeah. right? Like you can't just like publish a medicine and without the FDA's approval. And how about a different approach? Because they never talked about like having a governing board. What is other possibilities to regulate this type of new tech into society. You like, think of, one besides that. I was going to say, can you think of any efficient, equitable review system that exists? No. Dude, we can't no, even get a driver's license in the United States efficiently. You think like yeah, I something like mine, this? Actually. Mine's about to can't, mine's about to get fucking, I just realized that yesterday when I was buying alcohol. <laughs> and and you're probably like, oh no, I, I don't want to do this this week. Yeah. I gotta do it this week so I can at least get it by, by like late summer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a line in this open letter. AI research and development should be refocused on making today's powerful state-of-the-art systems more accurate, safe, 
transparent, robust, aligned, trustworthy, and loyal. Mm -hmm. That's like saying, like, imagine replacing AI research and development with like social media companies should be trustworthy and loyal. And then like replace that again. Gas companies should be loyal and trustworthy. Fast food industry should be trustworthy and loyal. Like Webbit uh, is not talking about a company though, Webbit. It is generally talking a baby creating talking about an, an AI industry. As a baby. How about you just talking about AI as a person? What do you mean? So what happens if they're talking about AI not as a business like OpenAI or Google to be trustworthy in business? This AI baby has to be trustworthy and loyal. Because it's a thinking brain. It's growing. I think that's the, I think that was the point of view versus it being a company thing, but being, this is a, this is a child that's growing and how are we going to educate the inputs and outputs of like raising a kid? Think of it at that point of view. That's how I thought about it. Not as companies. I thought of it as that. Yeah. But how many ways, like what's the right way to raise a kid? Oh, it is not. Like you don't know until you get there, but is this the proactive approach of saying, hold on, do we have to step back if we let my kid go into the path of, oh, they're going to go down something? Wouldn't you want to say it earlier than say until it actually happens? Would you want to give your peace as a dad earlier? I mean, does that mean that like if some set of experts put together a shared safety protocol for how you raise your kid, you're going to agree to that because it's for the betterment of society? the guideline how much parenting books that you people actually read just for basic guideline just to figure out what's going on yeah but this would be like imposed on the industry so that's like the equivalent of saying like imposing the way that you're going to raise your kid mm -hmm. like th these aren't books people are publishing on like best practice for ai development right where you can optionally read it and agree or disagree and tailor your own curriculum for your kid right this is to create and implement safety protocols for the industry. Like some yeah. expert is like, J.O., you need to tell your kid you love them five times a day. And you go really the old school Asian parent round saying you got an A minus, you're not good enough. Yeah, and just never say I love you ever. <laughs> some scars are coming up on this uh, podcast. <laughs> <just saying. laughs> but no, it's interesting. Like, we, can always, we can go loop around this in circles, but I thought it was an interesting thought. It is, and I, I think it's just the tip of the iceberg. I think there's a lot oh, it's... that's going to happen in the same way that yeah. we saw, you know, in the past couple of years around, like, blockchain and everyone wanting to, like, regulate it in some way. Mm -hmm. Like, no, there, there's not a government out there that doesn't want control over something. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's going to create, you know, there, there's always going to be... Just interesting. But my, I just I just thought back on the first podcast we had was how are we going to utilize AI? Is it agreeing that I've been using it a lot more, more of an assistant versus kind of shying away from it, which is, has helped. But now it's like, hey, this is, let's take an extra layer to analyze things, which is really interesting for me to be so early on versus we let so many new type, type of tech come on and then be more reactive versus proactive. And I think that was the base principle also that sparked my interest. Yeah, I'm so conflicted. Well, this is topics are supposed to be, man. You want you want to move on as you're, you're dreading these uh, internal topic confliction. Okay, I'll let you have the last word because this is your topic. But the only thing that I'll say is a lot of the big name hitting people that are okay with pausing for a brief moment are all people that don't necessarily have to make the most of this opportunity with AI. They're all financially secure. They're all already in like cushy areas, like whether or not they capitalize financially from what happens of AI or not, like they'll be okay. And those that are trying to break through that to change their lives potentially financially, I think that's where it creates a lot of concern. I think on my final word, it would be, See how it plays out, to be honest. It's just interesting. I, I'm on the sense of like at least <clears throat> we're doing proactive approaches versus how we always just said fuck it and we'll see where life takes us approach. Whatever that means, it could be good or bad. I just find it extremely interesting and see what happens.
Yeah, that's fair. We're just a cog in the wheel at this point. We're just we're just watching. Yeah, I think I think that nails. Yeah, that that's exactly what it does. <laughs>